You're watching Reason and Theology Live, a show dedicated to charitable discussions, debates, interviews, commentary, and analysis. And now, your host, Michael Lofton. Welcome back to Reason and Theology, everyone. Your host, Michael, on a Thursday, doing a pre-show show here. We have uh, Philip Campbell who's going to be coming on the show here in just a little bit to talk about his book, The Church in the Dark Ages. So that's uh, something to look forward to. But before that, I just wanted to uh, do a short show on something that I saw earlier that caught my interest, and it relates to dissent and dissent under the guise of piety, under the guise of being traditional. Very problematic and very disturbing stuff to see. <clears throat> of course, I am referring to an article that I just saw. Share my screen here <clears throat> so you can know what I'm talking about. There it is. <clears throat> Published by uh, one Peter 5, Peter Kwasniewski. Uh, priests who want holy water must use the ritual despite Episcopal prohibition, uh, which is the name here of the um, of the article. Now, a lot of stuff that we could really say about the uh, ritual of blessing the water. Um, but I, I want to comment on a couple things that caught my eye here. Uh, let me scroll to the appropriate part. And uh, yeah, there it is. Let's talk about a couple things here. Number one, I noticed there was something here about um, Peter Kwasniewski talking about Archbishop Cordiglione um, of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. And in my opinion, he woefully, atrociously misrepresents the Archbishop. Um, he portrays the Archbishop as saying right here, he doesn't put it in quotes, but he gives the meaning of what the Archbishop allegedly says as being the new blessing of water doesn't make water holy, while the old one, the one in the ritual Romanum, does. Um, and of course, he gives a link to the Archbishop's talk, which you could click on and read. And if you do that, um, that's actually not what the Archbishop says. Um, so let me take just a brief moment to explain that I think Kwasniewski misrepresented the good Archbishop and then the deeper problems of dissent that I'm seeing here. So let, let me just briefly say that the Archbishop, from what I could tell in the article, um, I, I don't disagree with anything that the Archbishop says. I, I think that he has some valid criticisms of the um, the Book of Blessings and the ritual, therefore, blessing of holy water. But um, number one, of course, the Archbishop is not talking about the new Roman ritual, because for that he explicitly notes that the water is itself explicitly blessed. Um, the Archbishop, of course, in the context was referring to uh, the Book of Blessings and the blessings of water there. And he's noting that the in the Book of Blessings, it's not um, the water explicitly itself is not asked to be blessed. Um, but you'll note then that Kwasniewski interprets that to mean that the water isn't actually holy water. The new blessing doesn't actually make water holy. That is not what he actually says. That is not what the text of the archbishop says. Um, in fact, what he does say lends itself to believe that the archbishop does still believe that the water itself is holy, even with the uh, blessing used in the book of blessings, except he thinks that that should be made more explicit. It should be made the object of blessing. Um, so I don't think that the archbishop is saying that it's not holy water if you use the blessing in the book of blessings. And again, that's not that's distinct from the one in the new Roman ritual. He was speaking again explicitly about the book of blessings, and he's not saying that the water itself isn't actually holy. He's just saying there's no explicit invocation to bless the water itself, though one can argue that that's there in the intention. And obviously that's going to be sufficient, the intention. If the intention is not sufficient to bless something, then I'm sorry, the liturgy of Adai and Mari goes out the window. 
because there's no explicit words of institution in it. And yet it's one of the oldest liturgies that we have um, that is venerated. And we do believe that the Eucharist is present in that liturgy. And it's there because of the intention. And, and the intention is made manifest through words that are dispersed throughout the liturgy. So intention is going to be key. So even if the water in the Book of Blessings isn't explicitly um you know, an object of blessing, the intention is definitely there. But be that as it may, he, the archbishop never says that the water itself isn't holy. And that is actually contrary to things that the archbishop goes on to say. He still sees the water as itself, as an object, as holy, even, and he's talking in the context of the water um, in the Book of Blessings, with the uh, ritual of the Book of Blessings. So I think that Kwasniewski woefully misrepresented the archbishop. But even if he didn't, um, the archbishop nowhere calls for disobedience uh, to the bishops. And that's one of the troubling things that I'm saying. So there, there's two problems here that I really see with Kwasniewski. Number one, he takes a position that I don't believe the archbishop does. And that is, he says that the new blessing of water doesn't actually make water holy. Let that sink in. And now, of course, again, I, I, we're talking about the Book of Blessings. We're not talking about the Roman ritual. Now, the new Roman ritual, however, does explicitly invoke the blessings of the water. So this must be a criticism that Kwasniewski is offering just for the um, Book of Blessings. It can't be for the uh, new Roman ritual. So my question is, number one, um, why isn't that distinction brought out a little bit further in this article? Um, number two, even that which is in the Book of Blessings, how, how is it that the church could officially promulgate something that's so that is so utterly a failure that it can't even bless water? Um, I, I do I do think that improvement could be made to the Book of Blessings. Sure, I, I'm not saying that no improvement could ever be made to something that the church promulgates. But what I'm saying is, could the church fail so terribly that it tries to bless water but actually doesn't bless water? Um, that it, Or at least it tries to provide holy water but can't provide holy water in its ritual. Um, it, it seems like there's a serious problem when you start to call into question the efficacy of the prayers of the church to the point that you think that they fail that completely. Um, I, I think that that's just too much of a problematic position to adopt. If the church can be so empty in its power in this book of blessings, uh, what's to stop a person from saying at that point that, you know what, it's also empty in its new sacraments? It's also empty in its new uh, Novus Ordo liturgy. It's it's empty. It doesn't have grace, or it doesn't have as much grace as the older liturgy. Uh, also a problematic position. But that's not the biggest concern that I have here, right? I mean, uh, that, okay, could the church provide a blessing that completely fails to actually bless the thing <laughs> that, that it's supposed to bless. I think no. I, I think I don't think that that's possible. But if you were to say that, okay, it fails in that area, if you were to take that position, ha have you just completely given over um, the church to a defectible position? I think that it leads to that, but not immediately, right? I don't think that you've immediately conceded the defectibility of the church, but I think that your position, if you just continue to carry it to its logical conclusion, will take you to that position. But that that's not my biggest criticism here. Again, that, that's not the biggest concern that I have. The biggest concern that I have, aside from misrepresenting the archbishop, is that part right here in the title. That, why won't it let me scroll down? Come on. Right here. Priests who want water, holy water, must use the ritual. Uh, he's talking about the old ritual. Despite Episcopal prohibition. Two things. Number one, 
That's also not true because, again, you can use the new Roman ritual, as the archbishop has noted, and that does explicitly invoke um, the blessings of the water, which I would still say the Book of Blessings water is, is still holy water itself because of the intention. But if you somehow felt that intention was insufficient, as problematic as that position is, uh, the new Roman ritual still blesses the water. So um, you don't have to use the old Roman ritual. You could use the new Roman ritual. So that title is already um, false information. You don't have to use the old Roman ritual. But notice that part there, despite Episcopal prohibition. Uh, very clearly here, we've now, uh, we're now seeing, not that it's exactly new from this camp, but uh, these guys are now starting to promote the idea that, you know, the bishops should, um, one should dissent from their bishops. I, look, I, I think when you have adopted the position that, you know, the church's holy water is not really holy anymore, uh, its rituals don't really work, um, you should start dissenting from the bishops, uh, you, you've, <laughs> you've sold the farm. You've gone way too far at that point. And I think this is at this point we're we're adopting a position that inevitably then leads to schism. Um, this is the equivalent of junk food. This is spiritual junk that is going to destroy souls. That is what this stuff does. Um, you start telling priests that they need to disobey their bishops when it comes to the rituals that they use, that the new rituals don't actually uh, make anything holy. I mean, you start to ad adopt a position like that, it's only a matter of time before you leave the church. And of course, that's why this camp here is producing a whole bunch of converts to Eastern Orthodoxy. Um, I think this group right here, one Peter five and 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 associates, um, they're the best evangelists I have seen, aside from Taylor Marshall, for the Eastern Orthodox. I, I think that they're incredible evangelists for them. That's definitely not their intention, um, but that's exactly what they're doing because of stuff like this. This is spiritual junk. This is garbage. I think this is stuff that needs to be avoided. Um, and people who are promoting this need to be avoided. This is the kind of stuff that will point a person right out the church. Um, it's harmful. And I'm very, very sad to see it. I want to get y'all's thoughts, though. What are your impressions? Have I misunderstood anything? Have I misread? Put your questions there in the comment section. I want to see them. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and have a discussion. Um, make sure to put it to at reason in theology so I can uh, spot it as a comment or a question for me. But again, put it to at reason in theology and uh, let's talk about it. Am I wrong? Did I misunderstand? Um, seems like the, the position that's being adopted here is that one needs to disobey the bishops and needs to use the old Roman ritual if they want to have holy water that would then indicate that the new Roman ritual doesn't make holy water. And that's not what the archbishop was saying. He was talking about the Book of Blessings, not the new Roman ritual. And for the Book of Blessings, he doesn't actually say that it's not holy water. That's not what he says. Go and read the article. He never says that the water isn't holy. That's not what he says. In fact, he, what he says implies that he does believe that the water is still holy. So uh, when you start to misrepresent archbishops like this for your own um, positions of dissent, I, I think that there is a massive problem. I see Larry Romano says Michael is right. Well, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear some uh, feedback if I'm not. Let's hear it. Um, so there's a question here. What are some examples where disobeying bishops would be justified in our day and age? That's a wonderful question. Um, so if a bishop were to ask you to do something sinful, then you can't do that. Um, if a bishop says, hey, don't use the old Roman ritual, use the new one to bless water, is that sinful? No, it's not. Um, <coughs> it's not sinful at all. So you would then be disobeying something that you don't have any good reason to disobey. 
unless you're going to say that the Roman ritual itself now doesn't produce holy water. And that's not what is being said by the archbishop. And that's not true anyway, because intention would be, at the very minimum, intention would be sufficient to bless the water and make it holy. But when you start adopting a position that the, the church promulgates rituals that are um, unable to bring about what they're supposed to bring about, you, you, you've you gone too far at that point. Uh, you sold the farm. And then when you start to say, okay, now disobey these bishops, that's, yeah. Um, g give me a, give me a, a saint who took that position. You know, let's start disobeying our bishops and not using the rituals that they've been promulgating and start to use old rituals. Like, show me where that has ever turned out well. <clears throat> but, you know, some examples where you could disobey a bishop, again, if the bishop is telling you to do something that is sinful, the bishops are not telling you to do anything sinful, though, by using a new ritual. They're not doing that. Even if they prohibited the old ritual, they're not telling you to do anything sinful. The new ritual is good and holy. Um, if, if they told you, hey, go and murder so-and-so, go and rape so-and-so. Obviously, you're not supposed to obey your bishop there because you have a higher um, authority that you're to obey, and that is God. And that's, of course, how some of these radical traditionalists are going to try to justify their position. They're going to say, we're just being obedient to tradition. And that's why I labeled this dissent under the guise of piety. We're just being pious. We're just being traditional. In fact, you're not. Because what you're doing is um, you're, in fact, um, saying the new ritual then is just empty. It doesn't have the ability to bring about what it's supposed to bring about. Um, now, of course, we're not talking, he's not talking in the context of other sacraments. We're talking about sacramentals, but still, I think the point is, is the same. So it's a good question. I appreciate you asking that one. Um, let's see if there's anything else here in the chat. Um, your boy EB says, God bless you, uh, Brother Michael. I hope and pray you are doing well and that you are happy and healthy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that last part, healthy. I'm, I'm definitely working on it. <laughs> definitely working on it. Like I said, I've, I've lost um, 36 pounds, somewhere around there, and I'm uh, con continuing to lose. So I, th I think we're, we're going in the right direction. Uh, Steven says, not that this is what uh, Peter Kwasniewski was arguing, uh, but isn't there another argument that water blessed by the old ritual is more efficaciously blessed and exercised than the new? Um, wh why would it be more efficaciously blessed, right? Um, it, it is, is the efficacy of this really dependent on words? Um, or is it not based on intentions and doing what the church wants you to do and what the church intends to do with the ritual? I think it's the latter, right? I think it's the intentions, and I think it is you're doing what the church intends to do when it, you know, puts this forth as a ritual for you to do. Um, why would particular words make something more efficacious than another? I, 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 th I think that is a position that cannot be maintained. I don't see how to um, how to make that one work. Um, but but also, what does it say about a church that offers less efficacious prayers than it used to? What, what does it say about that church? I mean, just start to think through the implications of that. So you're you're telling me this church that I have to become a part of to be saved isn't really offering the same kind of prayers and the efficacy in its prayers that it used to if if you think that that doesn't entirely undermine the reliability and credibility of the church i i don't know what does i mean obviously that's going to undermine the credibility of the church <clears throat> which is again why these people who are adopting these positions end up leaving the church do you think if the Vatican banned the TLM completely, these people will behave or leave Catholicism completely? They'll leave Catholicism completely. They're, they're already starting to. Um, I think a lot of them would leave completely. Now, there are some in this camp that I imagine would start to say, okay, well, I need to get in line with things. But I think that those are the exceptions, right? But that's just my impression of what I see online, you know. 
could be that things are a little different. Uh, what if in your heart something doesn't feel correct and your disobedience is malicious? Uh, Bannerman asks, what, what do you mean? Something doesn't feel correct about the ritual that the church is promulgating? Is, is that what you're asking? And the disobedience isn't malicious. Look, I understand that there's different levels of culpability involving malice or uh, a lack of malice, but um, again, objectively speaking, when you adopt a position that you're going to start disobeying and dissenting from bishops in areas that you don't have any good reason to dissent, you know, from bishops, you've at least objectively adopted a very problematic. Um, and sinful position, whether or not there's internal culpability, you know, subjective culpability, uh, you know, let God determine those things. But I'm, I'm just talking about objectively what, what the case is. Um, <coughs> how is relative holiness of water measured? I've heard epiphany water is holier than other holy water, but what does that mean? I, I don't think that's great. I, I don't think that you can say some water is holier than other water. Um, I, I don't see that at all. Holy water is holy water. Um, now I think that that being said, you can say that there are some, um, there are some rituals that highlight that much more than others. Right. But I, I think objectively speaking, holy water is holy water. It's either holy or it's not. I don't think that there's any grades to this. Um, Padre Pio obeyed even when the church was wrong on him. That's correct. Yeah, they, these guys that are they're pushing for disobedience. Mm, yeah, I, I think Padre Pio wouldn't be on their side. Uh, do you think guys like Kwasniewski, Marshall, and other R and R types uh, convince people they're good by cloaking themselves in good things like social kingship of Christ? I, I don't know what their intentions are. I'm not going to speculate about their intentions, or I don't. I'm not going to say they're trying to convince people that they're good, but in fact they're not. I, I don't know what their intentions are. Who I don't know, and I don't care. I'm just saying at the end of the day, the net result, objectively speaking, is this is problematic. Even if their intentions are good, their intentions can be great. I don't care. Irrelevant. I'm sure Arius's intentions were good. I don't care what the intentions are. I, I care at the end of the day, what is the net result? The net result is these people are converting a ton of people to other communions. <laughs> that, that's the problem. <laughs> they're, they're, they're converting a bunch of people to um, uh, set of a contism or Eastern Orthodoxy or back to Protestantism. I mean, it, they're, they're scandalizing people. This is causing harm to souls. Uh, it's a problem. Um, let's see. St. Jude warns, warns again, against those who rebel against authority and perish in course rebellion. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I think when you start saying the church is holy waters and actually holy and, you know, rebel against the bishops, disobey the bishops, go against their prohibitions, You've gone way too far, way too far. And again, I, I don't care what the intentions are. I'm just talking about the objective net result. Uh, let's see. Looking through the chat, trying to see if there's anything else. Thank you for doing the Lord's work. What would be the best way to evangelize the trans? <laughs> I don't know. Believe it or not, I, I don't even want to address these radical traditional issues. I, I really don't want to. Um, and, and I'm rarely going to, rarely going to. Because it, it it often tends to attract a very toxic group that I don't want to have any kind of dealings with. Um, I'm not saying everybody who's a radical traditionalist is toxic. That's not what I'm saying, obviously. But what I am saying is that it tends to attract some really toxic people. Um, and you know what? I, I expect that from people who are outside of the Catholic church, I expect dealing with that kind of stuff, but I don't expect that from people who I'm in communion with. Um, so I might, I might not be the best person to ask that question to, because I, I'm, I don't really want to focus on evangelizing radical traditionalists. Um, I, I think others need to step up and do that.
others others need to do that um others who really feel a call to address that i just am addressing occasionally some of these radical traditional issues that i see that really need to be addressed when i'm not seeing others doing it but i would much rather that others do it <laughs> it's really sad that most aren't commenting on, on these issues for one reason or another they're not <coughs> Um, I used to be a rad trad a few years ago and I had many friends who were TLM only us and now all of them have left the church. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That's the case. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have, I have somebody I was talking to recently, you know, and, um, they, left set of a contism and, and came into the church. And, and the thing is, I can't tell them, Oh, go, go to your, just go to your local TLM parish that's in community. I can't tell them that. I can't tell them that. You know why? If I tell them to go there, they're going to tell them the exact same stuff that led him to set of a contism. <laughs> I have to tell them to go find a good Novus Ordo, <laughs> go find a, uh, Eastern Catholic parish. I can't tell them to go and find out, uh, a, a just regular TLM parish. Cause those people are going to lead them right back to the set of a contism. So it's, it's sad to see that kind of stuff. Not you, not that you don't have problems in Novus Ordo or, or some Eastern Catholic parishes that would end up leading a person outside of the church. Yeah. You, you do have some Eastern Catholics who would adopt a position that I think are inconsistent and you do have some Novus Ordo Catholics, obviously who are going to adopt some positions that I think lead a person outside of the church for sure. But I, I can't, in other words, I, I don't see the TLM anymore though, as, as a safe haven, really. Um, I, I think that that's going to be the place where you're most likely going to find content that would lead you outside of the church. Um, sadly. Hmm. Can you do a series on the four constitutions of Vatican II with guests? Maybe you know what I, I was definitely thinking about doing that. Um, I, I, I'm going to say yes. I just don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Um, Larry says I was heading in a rad trad direction. It's not healthy. Uh, eyeing fellow Catholics with with constant suspicion. Right. Yeah. No, we're we're all guilty of, of sometimes reading too much into a person, for sure. Um, but I understand what you're saying. On the whole, this crowd tends to read everything with evil suspicion. I agree. Um, and that is a sin, by the way, the sin of evil suspicion. Scripture talks about it. It is a thing. Um definitely worth uh worth avoiding and and looking into so you can be aware of how to avoid it again evil suspicion it's this idea that you you interpret everything that a person says or does in the worst possible way in an evil way rather than in the best most charitable way and i'm trying to give you know the Kwasniewskis of the world the most charitable interpretation that i possibly can give if i've failed at that it's definitely not my intention i'm trying to give them the best charitable position that i can the best spin i could put on them but i just i don't see it uh, it seems like this is the kind of stuff that leads people away um let's see is the thickness of your beard proportional to the level of Eastern Catholicism? The thicker the beard, the more Eastern Catholic you get uh, until it's down to your feet. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I actually, I think that there are some, some canons involving um, cutting your hair and beard in the East. I, th I think there are some canons there. But, but I believe they're for priests, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't know if you're talking about the thickness of, of my beard specifically or just kind of people in general, but but my, mine doesn't have anything to do, that, <laughs> to do with that. I'm, I'm just trying to grow it out a little bit and then grow the, the hair right there out. Um, wouldn't it be cool for the Pope to declare ex cathedra the Novus Ordo to be free from air? I feel like it would do a good job at separating sane and insane trans. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess, but 
why would he have to say that? I mean, it's it's like saying the Pope needs to declare ex cathedra that it is not damning souls with its uh, reformed liturgy. You, you know, th- does it re- does the church really have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't you already maintain that? Is, isn't that already dogmatic? I mean, maybe it's an undefined dogma, but it's still a dogma because it's divi- it's di- divinely dogmatic, right? I, I think that that would be a proposition found in scripture tradition that maybe it hasn't been solemnly defined by the church, but I, I think it's an undefined dogma. Aren't you supposed to already believe that with divine faith? So... <laughs> Does the church really have to say that? Is is my question. <laughs> when when you start to ask those, I'm, I'm not. Let me, let me rephrase. Not you. When a person starts, a person starts to question whether or not the church is, um, you know, promulgating something that is spiritually harmful to souls and erroneous. Um, and here I'm talking about air that uh, an unsafe kind of air not some kind of air in its non-definitive teachings um when you start to you know have those kinds of questions i, I think that you've you've really gone in the wrong direction um stuff like pope francis's motu proprio our litmus test to bring all the private heretics out <laughs> into the open to open manifest formal heresy i don't know you know i, I kind of feel like <clears throat> I, I kind of feel like that wasn't exactly the intention. Uh, I think his intentions are clear and the uh, in the actual motu proprio and also the accompanying letter. I think his intentions are clear and we should take them at his words as to why uh, he, he promulgated this. But if, if this is just about getting schismatics out into the open, uh, there's a whole bunch of liberal schismatics in the church. Why aren't those being addressed? <laughs> Uh, I think those need to be addressed, you know, with even more vigor uh, by by the clergy. Um, let's see, what is your take on the overall state of the Latin Church? Uh, I think it's it's definitely in in a position that um, it, it's suffering. It, you know, I I don't think that the Roman Rite it, it has anything that's evil or um, that is spiritually harmful. So I don't I don't think objectively speaking, but the the Roman writer is, is harmful to a person. But obviously there are a lot of abuses in the Roman right. So that is harmful. Sure. The abuses. Um, but I, I'm not going to say that what has been promulgated by the church officially in the Roman right is harmful. That's not. So I, I think what's put forth in the Roman right is 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 fine. I just don't think that I just think that the the way it's being practiced the way you know at, at the parish level especially considering a lot of abuses i think that is what becomes harmful um but you can also find uh, harmful things outside of the roman right and, and some of the other rights too right so um i, I mean that, those are my short thoughts there on on the latin latin right i, I suppose that's what you're asking uh, Joe in, in the comments there. Maybe if you could clarify if I didn't answer your question properly, if you can clarify what exactly uh, you were asking, because I mean, that would be my position. I, I think that the Roman right is hurting practically. Um, and, and there definitely needs to be some, some improvements practically. Uh, and as far as discipline, you know, disciplining clergy and, and things like that, for sure. Um, but not what it's officially promulgated. So Vatican II claims that Jews and Muslims, some of the greatest enemies of the church, worship the same God. <laughs> well, first of all, let me, let me go ahead and, and ban this person. Um, if if you think Jews and Muslims are the greatest enemies of the church, um, you're, you're delusional. <coughs> There are far greater enemies <laughs> to the church than Jews and Muslims. Um, that that sounds ridiculous. Um, worshiping the same God. Um, 
Yes and no. I mean, we, we've spoken about this many, many times. Do Jews and Muslims worship the same God? Yes and no. Um, if you were to say, does an old covenant Jew worship the same God as the um, a new covenant Trinitarian? Yes, but in a very uninformed way, right? It's going to be similar to a Jew today. Um, but again, I, I've dealt with that in detail before in multiple shows, so I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. You can just go and watch those shows. How do we square the rupture in the theology of blessing between pre- and post-conciliar books with the continuity of the lex credendi required by the church's inerrancy? Uh, inerrancy? Now, again, uh, you're, are you talking about the blessing of, of water? Is that what we're what you're specifically asking about? I don't see anything in the question that specifies what exactly. How do we square the rupture in the theology of blessing between pre- and post-conciliar books with a continuity of the Lex Credendi required by the church's inerrancy? I don't think that this really is impacting the church's inerrancy, any of the changes that are making, made in the Book of Blessings, which, again, is not going to be the same as um, the New Roman Ritual. Right. Um, so I, I guess I'm not following for sure here. Um, let's see here. What was the new ritual published, by the way? Let's see. Uh, da, 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 1969 to today. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to find out something here oh well uh was it 87 87 is it hmm no oh, we'll have to come back to that one maybe i can address that at a later time but no i don't think the church's inerrancy has has been impacted by any of the changes uh that have been made so I would say the burden of proof is is on the person to demonstrate that these changes have been so substantial that they would call into question the church's inerrancy. Um, could you do an analysis video on the synodal path? Yeah, I, I think that that's, that's feasible. I was asking from the perspective of how badly the Roman church is hurting and what is would it take to heal it? I think you mostly answered, but if you have anything else to add. Yeah, I mean... Um, I, I think honestly what would needs to happen for there to be the healing is church discipline, um, discipline of clergy. Uh, there needs to frankly start being more excommunications. Some people need to be excommunicated. Some people need to be disciplined. Some people need to be warned. Um, and then if they don't obey the warnings, then uh, excommunicate it. We, we need to start disciplining people. <clears throat> I think if discipline, church discipline, were happening more often, a lot of these problems would go away. A lot of the issues would go away. Um, I think it boils down to the fact that the church, um, a, a lot of people who are in authority in the church aren't exercising church discipline and their authority to discipline a person. They're not exercising that and that then leads people leaves people in the church that really don't belong there now you got to be careful because jesus also talks about not going too far with that because then you'll start taking um the wheat with the tares right um at the same time jesus himself affirms the uh need to excommunicate people and so does the, the rest of the new testament so you, you got to be careful with it but i think we've we've gone to the other end of the spectrum where we've gone from maybe being overly harsh in church discipline to being way gratu too gratuitous. Um, so yeah, I hope, hope that helps answer your question. Mm. Are some doctrines in ecumenical councils that are not dogmas reversible? Yeah, um, some are, of course. If, if the ecumenical council is teaching non-definitively, then yes, it's reversible. Um, I can't name you a, a case where that's ever happened with an ecumenical council, but it's possible because an ecumenical council can teach definitively and non-definitively. Um, there are a lot of things that Vatican II taught that are authoritative yet non-definitive. 
could those be reversed? They could. I don't think they're going to, but they could in theory. Um, so it's a good question. Uh, do you recommend anywhere I could get help with scrupulosity? Um, for, first start with Father Santa's book, Understanding Scrupulosity. Start there. It has every answer to every question that you could possibly think of. <laughs> start there. Um, get that book. Read that book. And that will help you. Um, and find a good confessor and listen to your confessor. And stop listening to your conscience because your conscience is faulty and broken if you are scrupulous. If you're not scrupulous, you need to listen to your conscience. Um, if you are scrupulous, you need to stop listening to your conscience. And what I mean by that is you need to form your conscience better. Ultimately, immediately, you have to listen to your conscience, right? I mean, you're, you're supposed to listen to your conscience. Um, but the problem is whenever you're scrupulous, um, you have a faulty conscience. So your conscience might say that something is sinful when it's not. Are you to listen to your conscience there? No, you're not. You're not. You're to listen to your confessor because your conscience is not working. Uh, for a regular person whose conscience is working, you need to listen to your conscience and don't go against your conscience. That's a general rule of the church. But again, a person who's scrupulous, the last thing you need to do is just start listening to your conscience because your conscience is faulty and it's going to lead you to further scrupulosity. What you need to do is put your hands into the church into the hands of the church, I should say. Uh, put your life into the hands of the church by going to its priests and listening to the priests because generally their conscience is much more formed than a scrupulous person's conscience, and you need to listen to them. <coughs> and again, that's what the saints are going to tell you. So that that's not, my, that's not unique to me. That's not just my position. I'm just repeating what the saints are going to tell you. Um, what's the book on scrupulosity? It's called Understanding Scrupulosity by Father Thomas Santa, like Santa Claus, Santa. What's your favorite ecumenical council? Mine is Nicaea too, because I love icons. I think probably Trent, the Council of Trent. It's probably my favorite, just because of how successful it was. Um, anyways, I got to get going here. Got another show to prepare for at uh, 6 o'clock uh, Central in about 40 minutes here. So appreciate y'all watching and commenting. Let me know your thoughts there in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also check us out, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology if you want to support what we're doing here so we can continue to offer this quality content to you. All right, that's going to do it. We'll see y'all later. God bless.